Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to video three of our five part series with one of Mixpanel's leading experts, Mervin Pandu. Quick recap of our previous videos. In video one, Mervin first walked us through the analytics framework where we mapped out the entire tracking plan across the funnel. In video two, we went through the process of installing the Mixpanel SDK into our framer site to start tracking all the data. And in this video, we go through a dedicated troubleshooting session. We encountered many challenges along the way, including browser issues. For example, Arc Browser wouldn't track data due to its inbuilt ad blocker. We also had an issue where Framer was only tracking page view events on refresh of the site and not when navigating via link clicks. This is because Framer's core technology works a little bit like a React app. So we actually had to bring on board our lead engineer at Blitzit Manju to help out with the process. In fact, it's always useful to have an experienced developer on standby when setting up your analytics. And Manju was the star during this process. I'm sure you'll find similar challenges while setting up your own analytics. So if you do find answers to your own issues from this live workshop, then I'd love to know in the comments below. Just before we get started, my name is Omar Farouk, designer turned startup founder. And in this channel, I go through my journey building tech startups and trying my best to achieve breakthrough growth. So if you're interested in all of this stuff, then smash that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's jump into video three of this series, Troubleshooting. Let's go into a few other uh, pages. Here we have uh, the Help Center, which is like a documentation page. It's a CMS, so there's lots of pages here. We have our blog as well. This is a blog I recently wrote. Oh yeah, hopefully, would that be enough? Yeah, that's, that's plenty. I think that's that's okay. yeah. um, Which one were we on? It was this one that, yeah. Let's stick onto your profile, because then we know those are the events that you've triggered. Uh, and if you refresh that page, Just give it a few seconds. Um, are you currently using a specific browser? Yes, I'm using Arc Browser. OK. So another thing for users to uh, bear in mind is that with certain browsers, they have automatic um, ad blockers or tracking blockers. Mm. Um, things like mixed panel tracking sometimes will not work because the browser blocks uh, the traffic by default. That's something you can um, toggle off, but in general, this would block the traffic by default. I'm um, using like, you know, how, how um, you know, how does uh, mixed panel kind of navigate that? Because like for the, those people who are proactively trying to, you know, maintain their privacy as they surf the web, um, you know, w you know, what, what, how does it address that kind of issue? That is a great question. And generally with website tracking, client-side tracking, uh, it is to be expected that maybe up to 30% of the traffic gets blocked because of ad blockers. Okay. And this is with any tool that you use. Um, right. But all certain browsers will block it or ad blockers will block it. And generally what we recommend is to track, you know, things that you need client-side from the website directly via the SDK. But if you have certain key business critical events that yeah. can interrupt server side to do the server side. That way you would have a hundred percent of data on those business critical events and critical metrics. But okay. on um, the client side it's expected that yeah there'll be some traffic lost because of ad blockers. I see, I see. What well, makes sense? Uh, I noticed that there's Dagenham now, Mac OS it's so probably me. That could Very be like that me. Um, if we go into it we can have a look. Great. So triggering some events on my end as well. And if you go into, let's double check, page view. So I can see how doubling down, uh, so yeah, breaking, so I, someone's uh, on a domain uh, for a blog article, basically, for subtasks. Is that you? Uh, correct, yes, that is probably me. Uh, yeah. Cool, just checking why we are seeing different, um, not all our events within the same activity feed. Let's go back to the project. And if I switch browser, would that identify me as someone separate? Correct. If you switch browser, then technically you would be someone new because the, your identifier, your distinct ID is stored on the browser level. Hmm. Okay, so because you have a 
multiple events coming from the app and uh, the website, what we want to do is filter this out for events which are only from the web. So what you'll do is we'll keep it as all events for now. Okay. We'll show the users how they can do that. And then if you click on the three dots, we'll add a filter. And there we'll select mix panel library. So mix panel library, yeah? Mix panel library. And the value that we want to choose is web. So this now filters only for the web event, which, okay, we have page view. Um, Actually, um, this is maybe Manju can potentially confirm. Let's bring Manju to the stage. Uh, Manju, are you there? Yes, yes. Yeah, just curious, uh, would Mixpanel see our app events as web events as well? Because technically yes, it's a yes. web app. I mean, technically it will be shown as a web event itself because uh, even our app is web-based actually. Yeah, because we're just a, a Electron app in a Chromium, it's a Chromium technology blitz it. So it's it's seen as a cloud app in a sense. So I don't know if we can bypass that, Merv, on your side. Yeah, actually, I think uh, we can bypass maybe based on the version because uh, like by default, uh, the app which is using, they, uh, the users are connected with the plan and then their app version, actually those things. So if they're on browser, I don't think those will be, I mean, I think those will be null by default. Correct. Our version should not be tracked. Yes. Uh, yep. I'm just quickly going into your project, and I'll be able to guide you uh, on exactly what we use as a filter. I first want to double check uh, what's going on with the different events that we should be having over there. Uh, mm -hmm. Just once. Actually, I think one thing we can do is we can filter the URL based on the website. Like by default, our app won't show the blitzer.app. app. So we can just filter based on the contents in the URL. Shall we do that? Yeah. Should we do that? Okay. Um, How do you do that? Um, I'll confirm it in one second. Uh, I'll just try it out. So, current URL, I think. Yeah. So, so sometimes we can make it, I guess. As in, like, always has. Is there a condition? Like, you can say, like, uh, contains rule or something? Or is oh, here you go. Is contains. There you go. Correct, contains, and I think we can just do HTTPS. Um, HTTP, so not the whole URL even, like? Um, yeah, that should work as well, because everything should have blitzed.app to start with. Okay, so now we can see what- It's like all recent as well, like this is within the time we probably launched the um, the code, right? Uh, yes. One minutes max. One thing that I see strange here is the fact that we're getting a new identifier for each event. Um, and let me double check why that could be. Uh, let me open on my end. I think it is due to Arc Browser, I guess. So, Omar, you can check the event from Bangalore. Like, that is mine. Like, you can check that, the first event, the below. Bangalore, yeah? Yes. So I can go into other page and then check. I think that will be same, same, maybe. Okay, so we have two page views there, which is good. Uh, that's what nice. we expect to see. So I see the uh, home page, and the other one is, yeah, both the home page looks like, from what I see. Yeah, I just uh, did, like, uh, like gone through some pages, so you can check, I guess. Now I'll refresh. Should I even open a uh, mix panel on Chrome instead of Arc? Do you think that could ha help? No, that should be fine. Um, I use mix panel on Arc as well, and that works quite well. Yeah. I think it's more to do with the client side tracking, making sure that we have the right data in. Right, uh, yeah. So it wouldn't affect tracking necessarily, right? Which makes sense. Yeah. What was the longest time you've awaited, Merv, for, uh, for like data to come through? Um, oh, probably about a minute. Okay, that's quite normal. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's a uh, an issue with the fact that the project is in EU, and um, we want to make sure that we're using the EU API. Let me just check. Okay. Hmm. There we go. So we got a third page just come in. Okay. Uh, also, also the home page from what I see. What I'm uh, going to is um, 
edit the implementation code that we did to specify the EU API. And we'll add it as another thing for the user to double check. Um, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Because right now, we have the product set in EU, but the API is sending the data to the US servers. And uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe data is being dropped because it goes to the US, then to the EU, where it should actually go straight into the EU server. Um, but we can confirm this once we've data to the actual code. Let me just okay. it and we can That's really interesting. Oh, there you go. Five page views just came in. Uh, there we go. So, Manju, just to confirm, were you were on the two minute rule blog page earlier. Um, looks like you're on a blog, right? Actually, like one thing I observed is that like if I refresh, it is being tracked. But if I go like within the links, it is not being tracked. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I mean, just checking. Yeah. Could be what uh, as what, what Merv was just saying earlier. Um, basically, the the server kind of data lag perhaps could could have some slight data drop off maybe. Otherwise, yeah. Couldn't be the case, right, Merv? Like, as in, you know, we're relying on refresh. I think what Manju is saying is actually it's not being sent in the first place, uh, rather than being sent to the US, which is quite strange. I'm just trying to reproduce this now to see. Have you seen something like this before with uh, clients? Uh, not so much because with Framer, we don't really see it. Uh, see from implementation too often, right? Um, um, but I'm wondering if there's something within Framer that's okay. Yeah, I see it on the refresh as well. Um, it's not being tracked on. Um... Uh, one thing I can add is that like Framer is kind of like a single page application. I mean, by default, it works similarly as in React app, so it is something similar. So I think that might be the case. Yeah, just thinking with button clicks, that should work okay. We can go on to the next stage and track those button clicks. Yeah. Um, but I would need to maybe deep, take a deeper, like, do a deeper investigation into why page view is not being tracked on the moment page. We might need to have like some additional um, code. Yes, I just got my my page tracked, which is the event I just did. I did a refresh, and it's it, it's what Manju, what you just said, which is the fact that uh, we are sort of relying on a refresh to actually for any of this data to come through. So yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, Merv, it'd be interesting to know if there's based some solution for Frame as if if it's based on a tech issue, as Manju yeah. pointed out. I That'd think be very interesting. to investigate some custom code to maybe force a page view to be tracked. Uh -huh. um, and it could be that, yes, the way Framer is running, it's not generating or it's not triggering the automatic track call that Mixpanel runs whenever the page is loaded. And we might need to manually add a track call for a page view um to get it to run okay uh i think manju shared something um uh yeah actually i just checked like in doc it did mention that like we can track like for single page applications if we add full url it says that it will track regard based on the url change not like a page load mm -hmm. if we add like a full url instead of true so not sure if the okay. uh, yeah. can, can try. We can definitely try that. Um, let me just quickly go into the documentation to double check. Where, where do we paste it, Manju, that one? Ah, it's you, the same, Omar. Like where you add the token, like mix the last code, where it is true, instead of right, true, yeah. you can add yeah, full string. No, not that. Yeah, instead of true, track page view is true. So instead of true, like in like, yes, instead of true, true, add the string full URL. So I'll just paste what you just sent, that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the full URL in double quotes. It will work. The few, fu oh, the full URL, as oh, in. Yes, yes. So so what you just sent me, not that, 
uh, you want me to oh full url that thing yeah, yeah it's the same thing actually yeah i mean we just start like few more debug and other things but you just have to replace it oh i URL. see okay so like this correct me if i'm wrong bro i'm i'm a bit confused as in like you want me to put this inside here yes full url exactly ah. in string yes yep. and if you just give me one second um, yeah. you know, the code for the um eu api as well yeah that absolutely will just take that one off also the time turned out to be super valuable, Manju. <laughs> and Omar, I think you added extra bracket, I guess, after full view. Full, full view Where, where's that? I mean, after full URL, I think you added extra bracket. Like, you have to remove that bracket. That Later one here? Right. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. There we go. Can't go wrong by having someone that fully understands code <laughs> in, in, in these kind of sessions, for sure. Really? So, um, Just for context, Mav, Manju is like literally coding everything you see on Blitzit. Amazing. So the, the whole app is under his wing. Nice. Uh, all right, I'm just going to put this in the chat. So what do we have here? OK, so I've added an extra uh, parameter at the end there. So everything is the same, except mm -hmm. local storage. We have this extra bit, which is API host. Uh, HTTPS slash perfect. Slash. So, so what am I doing, dude? Am I just putting? Am I just pasting that this last piece here? Uh, oh, so no. you uh, So exactly this. Yeah, where you see mixpanel dot init. I've just added bit? extra bit of line. Yeah, exactly. All right. So I am pasting. Yep. So the so this is I've noticed this. You see this? Notice the the quotation marks. Like I've had <laughs> that. This is the issue that we had with. Um, yeah. Let's add them again. Yeah. Yeah. With um, does this can you keep the space here or yeah that's fine right? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. All right. Okay, guys. So I'm hitting save. Let's do that. Fingers crossed. Let's see if this works now. By the way, if we solve this based on this is going to be again even more valuable for specifically framer users because it's probably framer users out there that are breaking their heads thinking the code as is mentioned in the docs would probably work. But if they don't they don't know this specific detail, which is like a single page app. I, oh, I'm, I'm still on Arc Browser. Let me go to, here we are. I'm going to, now this time, what I'm going to do is I've refreshed this page, but then I'm going to go into different pages. I'll go into blog. I'll go into this blog. I'll go into this blog, which is the Notion calendar one. Go to the Help Center. We've got plenty of pages here various pages for documentation of how our app works. Great. So that should do the trick. Let's head over back to Mixpanel on Arc Browser. I am going to go to events. And ooh, you know what? Let me go back where we had that filter applied, which was. Mm, on my end, for some reason, I'm not seeing this data come through anymore. Um, oh, really? So there's something broken. Six, yeah, the last event I had specifically was uh, six minutes ago. Yep. So, this could be me as well, by the way. Oh, Dagenham, yeah, yeah, we're both from yep. Dagenham, <laughs> technically. Helpful tool shooting. Um, yeah, maybe it's uh, due to the framer end. Maybe we'll have to do something like code based on the page view because again, it's still the same, like only on refresh, it is being tracked. Oh, is that the issue? Okay. So that tweak didn't really uh, help the. Uh... All right. Um, I think maybe for this, for the page view section, might need yeah. to get and add a little bit to that section. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just thinking out loud here. What could be the best way to, to do this? Okay, let me try to update the code. What I want to do is maybe have a page view being tracked. Is that we could implement a track call to track the page view, but at the same time, if we do that, then the user refreshes the page, we could end up with two page views being tracked for the same sort of view. Uh, we're going to need to understand why when the code runs and the libraries, uh, the SDK is initialized, why are we not um, getting 
essentially page view events straight away. Um, okay.